Today we're going to be talking about how to derive an expression for an object's velocity as a function of time in the presence of air resistance. This is one of the more complicated derivations or mathematical maneuvers in AP Physics, and the College Board has asked students to do this derivation in the past on free response parts of the test. So please feel free to use this video to practice the derivation at your own pace, pausing and rewinding as you need. Okay, so the problem follows from our investigation in the class with the coffee filter video analysis. We're given that the coffee filters experience a drag force of magnitude kV, and we have to determine the terminal velocity as well as the equation for velocity as a function of time. Keep in mind that drag force is extremely complicated. In real life, there are several things that affect how much drag an object experiences, such as the density of the air, the cross-sectional area of the object, and the falling object's velocity, just to name a few. Here, we're approximating the drag force as a force that's directly related to the object's velocity, so that the faster an object is moving, the more drag it feels. K would be the slope of this graph if you to graph drag force versus velocity. On the test, you may be asked to use a different expression for drag force, such as a different coefficient for k, or even a different function of velocity entirely. But this does not change your game plan. If you're curious to learn more about this approximation, feel free to Google drag, Reynolds numbers, and Stokes' law, but I'll leave that to you and the engineers to figure out. Okay, so to set up this derivation, what we're gonna do first is identify that our system is just the coffee filters, and that we're also going to take the positive direction to be downwards because that's the direction of the acceleration. So starting from Newton's second law, we have the net force is equal to the mass of the coffee filters times its acceleration. And then we also have that the net force then, if we draw a force diagram, we'll see that this is going to be based on the force of gravity that the coffee filters experience from the earth and also we've got this drag force that the air exerts on the coffee filters now that drag force that points upwards is very a variable force and it depends on the velocity so that length is is not uh is not definite it's always changing approaching equal to the force of gravity. So here we've got the force of gravity minus drag force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now the force of gravity is just mg and drag force is kV. That's equal to the mass times acceleration. And we're going to replace the acceleration with its differential term, dv over dt. Now if you wanted, you could say, stop now and say that this is zero for the case of terminal velocity, where we have that term being equal to zero. We have mg minus kv. And it would be easy enough to solve for the terminal velocity you would find to be mg over k. All right, so just hold on to that. And keep in mind that when these two forces are equal to each other, then that velocity is equal to mg over k. Okay, so this is the part where the math does get a little tricky. Um, so you'll have to bear with me. But the idea here is we're setting up what's called a differential equation. We can solve this with what we know about just integrals and derivatives and calc 1. Okay, so right now our goal is to get everything with a V on one side and everything with a T on the other side. So here's uh, how we're going to do that. Uh, first, I want to swing the DT over to one side. And this term here on the left hand does left hand side does have a V in it, so I'm going to divide through here. Okay. 
And then let's clean that up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that M, that little M, over to the other side. Now the idea here is that we will want to take the integral of both the left side from 0 to t and the right side from 0 to v. So in order to do this, we need to go and think about our table of integrals and see if we could do a few things that will make our lives easier. So it looks like this is the one that's most applicable to where we're at now. Um, the left-hand side, integrating, that's not going to be a big deal because it's a fairly simple integral, just dt. However, the right-hand side does involve us dealing with our velocities. Now, in this case, our integral table requires that our x is up front, so we need to do a few things to move our velocity up front. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a negative k, from the bottom, and that's going to make our function look like this. And our left hand side will remain unchanged. And we've got that. And from here, what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to swing the minus k over. And pull out the 1 over m so that I just have my dt here. I forgot my limits. And I'm going to just rewrite this integral on the right hand side so that it looks something like this. And now we're free to integrate and evaluate on the left-hand side. My integral ends up being that. And on the right-hand side, my integral ends up being this natural log that we will have to evaluate. from 0 to v. And when we do evaluate this from 0 to v, we find out that we've got two terms. Where this left term came from plugging v in, and this right term came from plugging uh, zero into my natural log. And using this property that natural logs have, we can combine this into one natural log. That looks like that. So at this point, we can start solving for v, which is currently buried deep inside that natural log. What we can do is use some exponential natural log rules to get in there. Which kind of, I'm not sure what this move is called, but I know it gets rid of our natural log. Okay, now let's clean things up here. I'm going to swing over the denominator so that I have minus mg over k e to the minus kt over m is equal to v minus mg over k. So adding mg over k to both sides we now have this expression here. Which 
which can be simplified to this. And here's your velocity as a function of time in the presence of air resistance. Now, remember from a few slides in, this term here was actually our terminal velocity. All right, so don't forget that. And here are some equations for this problem. Here we've got the velocity as a function of time. Um, it's an exponential shape. And we've also got acceleration. If you want, you can take the derivative of the velocity as a function of time, and you'll find out that it will get the expression at the bottom. We also want to be familiar with the graph shapes that these functions produce. Now, I went on to Desmos just to take a look at what kind of shape a velocity time graph would make, as well as, a, as our acceleration time graph. So here is just the general shape of velocity time, and here is the general shape of the acceleration time graph, just to give you an idea of what features we're looking for in these graphs. Now we can learn more about the characteristics of our graphs if we look at limiting cases. So what I mean by that is if we consider what happens to these equations when time is equal to zero, so at the beginning of the problem, and time is equal to infinity, or in other words, the limit as t approaches infinity of these functions. Plug in zero for a time makes it so that this is equal to uh, one, and we just end up with a velocity of zero here, which makes sense because we want that to be equal to zero. Now, if we look at the limit as t approaches infinity, what we will find is that this value is equal to mg over k, which makes sense because that's just our terminal velocity. So whatever value this approaches asymptotically, it will approach the ver uh, terminal velocity. So likewise here, we can also figure out a few things. If we say that this is equal to zero at the very beginning of the problem, this exponential becomes one. So we know that this, these coffee filters end up starting at some value g. And it's gonna decrease, and we know for a fact that when it does decrease, our acceleration will be equal to zero because terminal velocity is defined by the case where we've got balanced forces due to the air resistance. So we do know that this has to be zero. So again, just to summarize the note about graphs, just know that our velocity will approach our terminal velocity. In this case, given the parameters of the problem, it's going to be mg over k, which we found a few slides into this, uh, this video. Uh, and it also, the velocity also started at zero because we released it from rest. And again, looking at the limiting cases for acceleration, we know that initially it starts with your usual acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared, if we take down to be positive. And we know eventually that as we reach our terminal velocity here, we've also got zero acceleration. Uh, so hopefully this video helps and you'll use it as you study and prepare for the AP test.